It's Wednesday, June 22nd, and this is now on HNN. We can bring down the price of gas and give families just a little bit of relief. President Biden calls for a three-month suspension of gas and diesel taxes. Let's get through that rubble and see if there are any survivors. Developing news, an earthquake in Afghanistan is said to be the deadliest in decades. You can smell the fuel. Once you enter the, the, the well itself, uh, the conditions are, are very poor for breathing. An HNN exclusive, a former Navy diver, describes the contamination he saw in the Red Hill fuel well. Plus, we'll hear from those who were on this plane that caught fire landing at Miami's International Airport. Terrifying. That's coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching. This is now. You know, with the summer travel season already underway, the president is trying to find ways to ease that pain at the pump. And at $5.44 a gallon for regular here in Honolulu, here's a live look at that costly commute coming from the east side. Now, the Biden administration has already released millions of barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, but that hasn't been enough to produce significant savings for drivers. Bree Jackson has more from Washington. Drivers are keeping a close eye on prices at the pump after seeing record highs drop slightly. It's still much higher than it has been for the past few years. It cost me like 150 bucks to fill this thing up. President Biden is calling on Congress to suspend the federal gas tax for three months. The move would save drivers just over 18 cents per gallon on gasoline and 24 cents per gallon on diesel. But it will provide families some immediate relief just a little bit of breathing room as we continue working to bring down prices for the long haul. The president is also encouraging states to take similar action to combat what he calls Putin's price hike. Since the start of the war in Ukraine this year, gas prices have risen by almost two dollars a gallon in the United States. Republicans say it's an ineffective political stunt. The silly proposal that senior members of their own party have already shot down well in advance. Back in April, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called such a move good PR, but no guarantee on relief for Americans. Opponents also argue a gas tax holiday won't tame the impact of inflation. The Fed chair promising more rate hikes are on the way. We are highly attentive to inflation risks and determined to take the measures necessary to restore price stability. As the busy July 4th weekend approaches. Anything we can save, yes. I'm in, just do it. Do it fast, do it now. And with midterms coming up, the administration is trying to put the brakes on higher costs. The Biden administration is also pressuring oil companies to reduce fuel prices and produce more. The Secretary of Energy will meet with oil executives on Thursday. In Washington, I'm Bree Jackson for NBC News. New at noon, the State Department of Health is reporting 15 additional COVID deaths and 5,482 new infections in the past week. That compares to 7,199 new COVID cases and nine additional deaths in the previous week. You've got to keep in mind the state's COVID figures don't include positive results from at-home tests, so the real number is likely far higher. Rescue crews are searching for victims of a powerful earthquake that struck a remote region of Afghanistan overnight. Government officials say more than 1,000 people were killed and about 1,500 others are injured, and those numbers are expected to rise. Video from Afghanistan's state news agency shows people rushing the injured to a helicopter to be evacuated while others were treated on the ground. The epicenter of the quake was in a region roughly 200 miles southeast of the capital, Kabul. It hit around midnight when many people were asleep. The quake caused massive damage in the mountainous, densely populated area, which is prone to rock slides and landslides. We don't know um, if there are still people in those homes, uh, so we're desperately trying uh, to work with, with local partners 
to, to get through that rubble and see if there are any survivors. United Nations humanitarian officials said life-saving search and rescue operations are ongoing and some relief workers are on the scene, but the rescue effort is expected to be complicated because many aid groups left the poverty-stricken country after the Taliban seized control nearly a year ago. Afghanistan has a long history of deadly earthquakes. In 1998, one quake killed at least 4,500 people. As the military tries to figure out how to safely drain those Red Hill fuel tanks, we're hearing from a retired Navy diver who saw the contamination up close. He's worried about long-term health impacts. Mahalani Richardson has the exclusive interview. We were up against a huge problem. You can smell the fuel. Once you enter the, the, the well itself, uh, the conditions are, are very poor for breathing. Closest to the ladder well. Ladder well. 40-year-old retired senior chief master diver Brian Simic led a team of Navy divers in late December and early January who used white absorbent bags and skimmers during the fuel leak disaster at Red Hill. We're using that skimmer to uh, suck uh, just the surface, the very top of the water where the uh, contamination was suspected to be the most. Simic says it was clear their efforts were outmatched by the massive spill. We didn't have the capabilities adequate enough to uh, really make any type of lasting improvement on the well. The divers who went in had dry suits and breathing apparatus, while those directing them like Simic only wore their uniforms. Your clothes were completely saturated in fuels. He says the chemical vapors irritated his eyes. Five months later, he still takes medication for his eyes and he worries about long-term health impacts. It was mostly uh, my eyes that were uh, affected and irritated and, and that would last pretty much the entire time you were there and then for several hours uh, after you came out of the well. In early December, his wife Jamie spoke out about her family's illnesses from drinking the tainted water. She spoke to HNN from their military home. How long have I been poisoning myself and my kids? And then her hospital bed at Tripler. They failed us and they're continuing to fail us. To see the, the fuel contamination uh, for myself, uh, with my wife as sick as she was, that, that, that was hard. After 20 years of service, Brian Simic had enough and retired from the Navy. Now as the state and military focus on draining the Red Hill fuel tanks, he wants to make sure sick and families are not forgotten. Mahalani Richardson, Hawaii News Now. The tourism rebound continues, but that does not mean total traffic will hit the record levels of pre-COVID 2019. So here's where we stand. The crowds you're seeing are mostly from the mainland. Domestic traffic is up to most neighbor islands compared to June 2019. The Garden Isle, Valley Isle, and the Big Island each have 10 to 15,000 more visitors. Oahu is up only 4,000. The international count is still really low. Japanese arrivals remain down 90%. So if you have plans to travel to the mainland, especially to the smaller cities with smaller airports, listen up because times are a changing. Here's CBS travel editor Peter Greenberg. Well, now we got a real problem because the airlines, when they're parking planes, which ones are they parking? Those 50 seat regional jets that form the commuter services that get you to those smaller airports. And what are they doing now? They're canceling service and about to cancel service permanently. This week alone, American Airlines said they're pulling out of Toledo, Ohio, Ithaca, New York, and Islip in Long Island. Other cuts are gonna come, and these are permanent cancellations. So for smaller airports like Toledo, which also has now lost um, a United and Delta, you have an airport there with no major airlines flying into it anymore. What does that mean? Longer drives to get to other airports. So for the folks in Toledo, an hour drive to Detroit. For Fayetteville, do the math, it's not gonna be fun. And we have this update to pass along. A dentist who walked away from a crash landing in Kona yesterday 
tells us his landing gear refused to budge. Dr. Jeffrey Ellis says he had just taken off from Waimea when he realized his wheels were stuck. So I did a low approach to the tower so he could see what the gear was doing. And it was only partially down on one side. And it did not sound like I was going to be able to do anything more, but just do a circle around and bring it in. So that's what I did. I did circled around the airport and then brought it in, landed on the one wheel, held it. And then when I, obviously the plane just dropped and uh, once it hit the runway, it just skidded off the runway and that was it. Dr. Ellis was uninjured, but the plane's nose gear collapsed. The FAA is investigating. A much different scene in Florida. You're looking at the airliner that caught on fire yesterday as it landed at Miami International Airport. The front landing gear collapsed on the runway and three of the 140 people on board were treated for minor injuries. Manuel Bajorquez talked to passengers who say they felt lucky to escape. Cell phone video captured the moment that the red air jet carrying 130 passengers and 10 crew members skidded off the runway and the right wing burst into flames. Passengers could be seen fleeing from the aircraft, many using an emergency slide to escape. Once clear of the aircraft, passengers were able to see the full extent of the damage. Mayelin Rodriguez hurt her arm as she escaped. There was a lot of smoke, a lot of fire. Sí. Isbelis Gonzalez says only her clothing was scratched as she escaped holding her young son. What was it like for you to experience that? Very terrifying. Red Air, based in the Dominican Republic, has been in operation only since November, flying between Miami and Santo Domingo with a fleet of just four planes and a staff of some 50 people. Officials say the fire resulted from the collapse of the front landing gear, and crews used specialized foam trucks to douse the flames. They also did a primary search to ensure that all passengers were off the aircraft. Uh, we do have three patients that were transported to local area hospitals. Manuel Bojorquez, CBS News. Just a terrifying video there. Yeah. We got some news just into our newsroom. That's right. Noah is sa uh, says it's sad to report that last week the Oahu monk seal known as Benny was found dead on the North Shore. Now officials responded to the scene and took the animal to their facility on Ford Island where a necropsy was done. The initial results did not reveal any clear cause of death, but there will be more evaluation of samples done in the coming weeks. I know we're writing up that story right now for your h and digital platforms if you want to read more about it. I want to take you live outside. This is on the mainland. We're looking at New Orleans there. Mm. It is 97 degrees yuck. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yuck is right. I'm sure it has a lot of humidity, right? So let's get an update on our conditions and our winds are going to be changing and that could affect our own humidity. Here's Guy Hoggy with more on that. Starting on Friday, notice the winds back off. We don't see those yellow streamlines anymore. The winds back down to about 10 to 15 miles an hour, and those light winds will hold firm through the weekend. And then, starting on Monday, the trade winds pick, up, pick back up again. So your seven-day forecast looks really good. The winds are going to yo-yo a little bit uh, up today and tomorrow, down Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and up again on Monday. So the weather's not going to change very much, though. We will see some windward and mauka showers today and tomorrow. Fewer showers, more sunshine, drier conditions for the weekend. But also, with those lighter winds, might be a little bit sticky. Will we get fog and haze? I don't know. Uh, we'll, there's a chance that the fog increases as those winds lighten up. But uh, better weather, more con comfortable conditions with lower humidity levels and better air quality coming in on Monday when the winds pick up. Prices are soaring, and we're trying to help you with a new series on Sunrise called Covering the Costs. Casey Lund is in Mililani with ways on how to save on your utility bill. And to do that, I want to introduce you to our friend Claire Krebs from Hawaii Energy, the state's energy efficiency program. Claire, thanks for being with me. Uh, we're looking at this home. It was built back in 1969, but clearly a lot of work's been done. Yes, beautiful home, a lot of great natural light, as you can see, and a lot of great energy efficiency upgrades. So let's take a look. Let's go check them out. 
Claire, one of the first things I noticed right off the bat, it looks like in this home anyway, there are a lot of the LED lights and those can be a huge saver, right? Yes, definitely. It's one of the easiest ways actually to save a lot of energy in your home. You guys actually come in and swap out the older bulbs with LEDs, yes, right? Yes, definitely. It's one of my favorite programs actually. It's called our Energy Smart for Homes program where we go into a customer's home and replace every um, incandescent light with a, an efficient LED bulb that saves you a lot of money. Free of charge, completely covered by the program. We'll also come in and install some water saving measures as well as some advanced power strips as well. But Claire, a lot of folks have all kinds of stuff plugged into those power surge protectors, right? And yep. a lot of us think that when it's off, it's off but that doesn't necessarily mean it's still not sucking power, yeah, right? Correct, not always the case. And you'd be surprised actually at how much power some of these plugged in devices can actually use. So say you have your Wi-Fi that you always want on, you have your TV and an Xbox, and TV's only on every once in a while, and you want your Xbox only on when your TV's on. So the way that these advanced power strips work, you put your Wi-Fi monitor uh, router on your always on switch, your TV would go to the control, and your Xbox would go in one of these green ones. So that when you turn on your TV, your Xbox would automatically oh. get turned on. When your TV's off, your Xbox turns off. Another awesome feature of this home, it's got its own owned PV or solar system. Now that's not an entirely new concept. Many homeowners know about solar or have it installed already. One thing you might not think about is one of the biggest energy suckers, and that is the source you use to heat the water you use inside your home. And Claire, they've got a pretty good setup right here, right? Yes, they are set for efficient water heating for sure. So they are using a solar water heater that uses obviously the sun's natural heat to heat the water in drastically reducing their energy usage. You can see that Hawaii Energy has already been out here to take a look at this. Um, you guys have uh, a scheduled maintenance uh, guidelines for these as well, right? Correct, yes. We have our clean energy uh, ally network where you can find a, a qualified contractor to complete a solar water heating tune-up. And of course, we offer a rebate for that as well. Very good, Claire. Let's head inside and check out uh, some of the indoor appliances. The air conditioner, I like to keep things cold. <laughs> and while I run it way too much, uh, there are a, a lot of different models. This one's actually pretty efficient, right? Correct, yes. Our VRF mini split uh, AC units are actually very efficient just because they don't have any duct work where you can really lose your energy. Just like you need to maintain your car, get oil changes, get that all up to, up to speed, you still got to do that with your household appliances as well. So we offer a residential AC tune-up rebate for $75 just to make sure that your equipment is running at its most efficient. And when you talk about the, the fee for getting one of those tune-ups, $75 can cut into that quite a bit. Uh, and speaking of rebates, you guys have a wealth. We could talk all day. What are some of the highlights that maybe people can put into practice right now to save some money, some rebates and programs? Yes, so if you're looking to make some appliance upgrades, we have a lot of appliance rebates available, including a refrigerator trade-up rebate, as well as solar water heating, heat pump water heating, and all of those rebates can be found on our website at hawaiienergy.com. Very good, Claire Krebs. Thank you so much for your time this thank morning. You. Hawaii Energy is such a wealth of resources and knowledge if you're trying to make your home more energy efficient and really cover the cost as we know everything seems to be getting a little more expensive we'll have all that information online at hawaiinewsnow.com for now we'll send things back to you guys thank you for those tips casey mm -hmm. all right let's see what the internet is buzzing about today and this one's gonna get you hungry <laughs> Yeah, this is one of my favorite snacks. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kraft Macaroni and Cheese is changing a bit, but don't worry. It's just a little rebranding effort, and it's shortening its name to, get this, Kraft <laughs> Mac and Cheese. <laughs> just dropping the macaroni to Mac, which everyone calls it already. Yeah. And that's why the company says they're doing this. It's how fans of the product already talk about it. The box is getting a little makeover. They're only using this one color of blue now to really focus in on that logo with the all-important noodle there. Uh, Kraft said the box changes are part of an effort to rebrand to comfort foods is what they want it to be called. The new packaging with the new name hits store shelves in August. I've never seen the spiral one before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I was telling you earlier, I like to put a little less water in my mac and cheese to make it really gooey. More butter. Oh, butter always. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> yeah. have the butter.
Nostalgic. Yep. Well, Starbucks is adding two new summer drinks to its menu. First, a pineapple passion fruit, which, just like it sounds, the flavors of each fruit handshaken with real diced fruit chunks. Now, they've got the Paradise Drink Refresher also, which is basically the pineapple passion fruit plus coconut milk. So they have a new sandwich made with chicken, egg, and maple butter on a toasted oat biscuit, interesting, yeah. along with a cookies and cream cake pop. Now, even though the drinks are like summery, these new menu items will stay put on Starbucks's permanent menu. Okay. Yeah. yeah, low calorie too, I'm sure. <laughs> well, Audible has signed a production deal with former President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama with their media company, Higher Ground. Now, the Amazon-owned audio storytelling platform's multi-year global first-look deal will cover multiple projects. So it's an exclusive agreement, but the Higher Ground originals produced under it will be available on a range of podcast platforms. It comes after Spotify said it decided not to renew its exclusive 2019 deal with the Obamas. Sources say the Obamas wanted their projects to be available as widely as possible and not just on Spotify. Now, the Spotify deal continues through October. Higher Ground's first podcast, the Michelle Obama podcast, is Spotify's most listened to original to date. Yeah, everyone was wondering where they were going to go. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we have been talking about Elvis a lot this week on This Is Now, and we're not going to stop now. <laughs> uh, that's because we have this awesome feature story in our Good News Now segment that really focuses on the musicians that helped Elvis become who he was in those all-important childhood years of his life, and they are portrayed in the new movie that comes out this week. Here's Rick Damagella with more on that. Never looked for trouble, but I never ran. I don't take no orders. Before Elvis Presley became known as the king of rock and roll, his love of black music inspired him. He's a young singer from Memphis, Tennessee. Give him a warm hayride welcome. Mr. Elvis Presley. Baz Luhrmann explores those influences from Sister Rosetta Tharp to B.B. King in Elvis. When you learn that we do not have Elvis without black music and black culture, and the, from the way that he dressed to the way that he sings to the way that he moves, uh, him, him growing up in one of the few white houses in, in a black neighborhood, putting that into context is so incredibly important because we got to give credit where credit is due. discovered little Richard when he was 14 in Macon, Georgia, you know? That whole idea of like, you know, it all starting in the 50s with this crop is, is a falsehood. And so to be able to rectify that, that's just plain cool. Some people want to put me in jail. The world's moving. They might put me in jail for walking across the street, but you're a famous white boy. I'm not playing him in the time that we actually know him. We've never seen any footage of BB during this moment. I only have photos. So I'm still using my imagination to an extent as how would, a, how would BB at that age speak? I got to be a young little Richard who at the time probably was mentally going through so much with segregation, religion, sexuality. And I really got to go on stage and just be free and liberate myself. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Looks so good. Yeah. I will see it definitely. Real quickly, I'll show you a little video we have of some of Elvis's family hitting up Hollywood to celebrate the movie. Yep, they were there on Hollywood Boulevard. Three generations there. They were there to promote the movie, obviously, but also to put their hands in the legendary concrete on the Walk of Fame. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to see it. I don't know if I'll see it this weekend, but I'll see it eventually. Definitely. Yeah. That's good. Yep. That's going to do it for This Is Now, halfway through the work week, everyone. We'll be back tomorrow for This Is Now. Ashley's back first at 4 on KHNL.